Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. All right, let's do the thing. Let's do the thing for the yeah. 400th time. Oh, Hi, God. everybody, and welcome to Slam Fire Radio. This is the big one, episode 400. You waited 400 episodes to get here. Congratulations. You made it. We made it. We all made it. Today's date is April 15th in the year of 2021. I am one of your hosts, Trevor the Frilatte. I can't right, believe Mr. it. 400 Mr. episodes, you fucking idiots. Still Random Dave, right. that's you. <laughs> Hello. I just pulled up the show notes. Don't blame me. I was looking for a background to make Kelly happy. <laughs> been live for 15 minutes and he just pulls up the show notes right at the beginning. I'm Dave, trying to make Kelly happy. That was should... worth being two minutes late. Kelly has gone through more partners than I have underwear. That's an impossibility. <laughs> so why do you even try? So like oh two? God. Nah. <laughs> yeah, Dave, thanks. Dave has You're shirts welcome. older than I am. That's probably by my nay. I might, yeah, hand me downs. Family heirloom t shirt. Oh, right. That's how I'm, it works in my family. Heirlooms. I'm Random Dave, another one of our hosts. Thank you. I'm Kelly. I'm Adriel, another one of our hosts. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we are, we have hit the ground running in oh, true slam fire fashion. <laughs> another flawless entry. Congratulations. I thought so. Oh, Jeebus. All right, let's get into what we did this week in guns, which, as always, is brought to us by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. This week, they have the Benella. Benella? What the hell is a Benella? Benella. <laughs> they have like the Benelli. Benella? Benelli Nova Speed. This gun is an Ipsic shotgun and is built right at the factory out of the box to meet the division requirements of the uh, Ipsic standard manual division. Uh, that uh, that doesn't sound right. Somebody wrote that wrong. It's not manual because it's not a pump. It is a pump. Or is it a pump? It, it, it is, is a pump. pump. My bad. It is a pump. Yes. <laughs> so it's written right. <laughs> I read it wrong. All right. So it's for the Ipsic standard manual division. So it's a race shotgun for the manual division, which means <laughs> it's a it's a pump action shotgun, but it's got all the bells and whistles. It's got a nice long extended magazine tube on it. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, and uh, you can get it in 24 or 26 inch. There's a long list of amazing features that it has, but you know it'll take another 400 episodes to get through it all. So, um, just going to say that it is uh, fantastic. Go over there, check it out. It uh, it's 14.50 for Benelli. That is race ready. 14.50 is a steal. Yeah, it's a steal. Like. I spent that on my gun before I started to trick it out for Ipsic. So, yep. Go Look at there. that extended tube on it. It's I cheap. know, right? That's a big tube. Yep. Nice. She said. Might as well. 12 <laughs> shot, 12 shot tube. Mm. Mm-hmm. My question, if you, you put the tube that long on, why wouldn't you throw a longer barrel on it? Don't need Well, it. you got the choice of 24 or 26. I mean, it's got, you got enough weight with that tube and all that ammo. Do you need more barrel? You don't need it, and the extension can be somewhat sacrificial. So if you dump it in a dump barrel, not so much for Ipsic shotgun, but for three gun, you dump it and you bust Mm. the extension. Meh. Extensions are like fifty bucks, hundred bucks. Uh, Uh, Barrel, Mm. two, three hundred. So it's oh, three hundred plus. Yeah, yeah. I went and took my um, Versamax, which was the twenty-six inch version, and bought the. 20 or 22 inch version i forget which version of the versamax that came out but this version of the versamax had a like i said 20 or 22 inch barrel that was threaded for chokes so it brought the overall length of my versamax down which made it a lot nicer for three gun and and ipsic and that sucker was like well over 300 bucks man just for the barrel Mm. so that hurt yep Mm. And now I don't know where it is. I think some guy named Craig bought it. <laughs> All right. So let's get into what we did in guns. Um, I'll go first. I'm at the top of the list. And I did some stuff. And then was 
met with severe disappointment uh, yet again. I should be used to it by now. But uh, anyway, disappointed again. I renewed my uh, memberships. I got my IPSC membership paperwork and money sent in. By the way, whoever's responsible for that, you might want to acknowledge that. And, I don't know, cash my AMT, send me a card, something, anything, whatever you do. You. Um, all, all kidding aside, yeah, I did send my stuff off to IPSC to renew. And then um, renewed a gun club membership. And then I applied for my ATT. Why did I do all this? Because spring bang, annual indoor level three match in Dartmouth that the Atlantic Marksman Association puts on. And I never miss it. Maybe I missed it once since I got in. Fantastic match. Plus, I get to go hang out with Captain Andy and the crew down there. So my like extended Nova Scotia Ipsic family, I was going to get to see them for the first time since, I don't know, July or August, because I haven't gone anywhere or done anything since September. I applied for my ATT and I got it in record time, four hours, same day. Whoa. Normally they like, wow. thanks. Thanks for applying. We'll get back to you in two weeks. And anyway, yep, four hours. Later that day or the next day, it was announced that the Atlantic bubble that's a thing that we have in Atlantic Canada where you can travel within Atlantic Canada without having to self-isolate 14 days. Come and go as you please. Almost like it, like you're free, except show us your papers. You have to have your papers ready at the border, you know, like Nazi Germany. And uh, anyway, it's better than nothing. But um, it was supposed to open on the 23rd, and I was going to head to Nova Scotia that weekend because that was the, the date of the match. But uh, I got pushed back to May 3rd, so poop. Yeah. Yeah. Poop. I finally got all. Boo. Yeah. Finally was going to get to shoot a match, see the boys, and they screwed me again. So, yeah. That's all I didn't get to do with guns. How about you, Adriel? <laughs> uh, what did I do? I, uh, you did a couple of did videos. some stuff. I had some more videos. Yeah, that is true. Uh, let me just remove these spotlights here just so that they're not in the way. There. Is this better? Uh, sorry, I'm just modifying the camera. Uh, I ordered a bread and I too at the end of the last show. Uh, Kelly bullied me. Hmm. You were written witnesses. Hey. Should, should does for that. you, Kelly. No, I don't know. Is anybody going to ask him why or am I going to do it? Because he's why? doing... He's he's buying all the cheap ones. That's buying crappy guns. The bread yeah. and 92s <laughs> are not cheap. Is. This one uh, is. That this one is. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, it's not an FS. It's just an old school 92, S. like a Milser. Yes. Yeah, Milser. Yeah. Oh, heel. it's got the little button down on the bottom of the Magwell thing? Uh, Back, the heel. The heel of it. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. part. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. So why are you doing this? Now it's, it's a whole different why. Now it's a three. Well, because I'm doing reviews on cheap guns. That's why. Okay. Uh, yeah. So of all one the of cheap guns you bought lately, it's probably one of the better. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, like I, I, but quality wise, probably. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. So I ordered that. Hey, another thing. Uh, so I've been doing working on these uh, Norinco guns and what they do and what they can't do. MP22. MP22 mag. And I was reading online, like, yeah, the Mechgar ones work and some of the SIG ones work, but you have to like modify them. So I'm like, God, I'm the guy. I'll Dremel them out. So I ordered a uh, Mechgar 9mm mag and I was all ready to Dremel it, but I uh, don't need to. It fits just fine. So yeah, sweet. Don't need to do any of that. Have you actually the... shot it? No. With that mag in the gun? It'll feed. Well, it'll feed. Okay. Well, all right. I just Please don't fun. like to say it works fine until I've actually fired the gun with it in. I'll go shoot next a match you know, with it. Fallen out or whatever. I'm going to go shoot a three gun match with it. How about that? <laughs> uh, and then I got uh, some 40 cal mags uh, for it, and I'll those fit that. just fine. And they work with it. Say, cash millimeter. me outside just once for me. Cash me outside. How about that? How about that? <laughs> How about that? How about that? <laughs> you know, between these two, these ones cost more, and they got the stupid plastic dingus, and they're nine millimeter. These ones are forty; they're full metal, and they're cheaper. I would get a bunch of these, unless I was shooting Ipsic, and I, you know, didn't want to whoopsie and put eleven in a mag. Uh oh, something came in the mail. What? Well, mail? not the whole thing. The mail. This this bit came in the mail. We can't see you. I can't oh, see you. Hi. Can you guys see him? I can, but it's not focused. You need to focus, Adriel. Focus. I need to focus. I need to focus. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Add spotlight. 
There we go. Uh, remove there spotlight. You. There we go. I got nice. something. Uh, that's like a, a big th- magazine. That's a big magazine <laughs> in there. Hey, look at that. A big yeah. old magazine. Got a whole yeah. bunch in there. Yeah. So this is the uh, Maple Ridge Armory Maverick, and uh, yeah, got the bullseye. There we go. Just I need a three eight. Night. Ah, this one's in six what? five, but it could be in three oh eight. Yeah, but could right? Be. Could be. Yeah. Well, so that didn't take all on. that long to get to you from uh, Bullseye. Bullseye oh. sent that to you. It yeah, didn't it came all that quick. long. To get that. They sent the mags yeah. too. And uh, yeah, I, I, when I got the package, I'm like, oh, maybe it's the Beretta. Maybe those guys like got their shit together and, and sent it out like super quick. But no, it was this thing. In it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, receipt. So, so it's six five. Creed? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Six five Creedmore. Um, I had all the parts uh kind of kicking around and uh their barrel? <clears throat> their barrel. Yep. Their muzzle brake, their fore end. How long do they have any kind of MOA guarantee on that? I don't know. No. I don't know. I don't, yeah. pay, I don't pay attention to MOA guarantees. <laughs> so six point uh, five. You can't miss it anyway. Yeah. What do you want it to do? Yeah. Uh, shoot a deer in the face, or two, or three. Take out a few rapid tanks. Fire. Rapid fire. Take out a few know. tanks. Because I mean, all right. So that's that's gonna go. Is that that that's gonna go for sale eventually, right? As as everything does in my. I house. call dibs yeah. on it. Shut oh, up, you go away. This is why we're at what? <laughs> Cut my throat, David. Absolutely, bitch. You're too slow. <laughs> I got some. Oh, I, I put some apparently. real Gucci parts on here. If this is the. I uh, see that. Uh, trigger mft nice. um, trigger uh, real nice uh that's the uh timney Ooh, yeah i know that trigger one in there mm-hmm. yeah it's it's very light very light Ooh. And, too much uh, sugar for you david boop. can't handle it oh, not good for hunting though <laughs> it's a little light for the hunting rifle well, that's what the safety's exactly for it is put yeah. the safety on safety the off safety's for. <laughs> this is my safety sir safety yeah yeah so it's all oh, pretty no, minty I need to, I, need, I definitely need nice. to put some rounds through it. It's kind of like rubby. I don't know if rubby, you can hear rubby. that. It's dry. I need to put yeah. some oil in it. Or I'll just shoot it yeah. and then I'll oil it later. Um, yeah. it, pretty easy to Breaking install. Dry. All the, all the same stuff. All the same stuff as uh, putting together an AR, basically. Um, so I got a last night BPMS at nine. pattern? Yeah, I, I think so. BPMS I don't bits. know. I already had the parts that were like that all matched up. So I did all my homework before and then I didn't pay attention for what did they come off of? Then we can tell you if it was DPMS pattern or not. Um, I can't Stag remember. 10? Nope. The other one. No? Starts with an M. The other one. The BCL? Nope. No. Can't remember. Okay. I got I got I got it in the safe there. Anyways, yeah. So Okay. Gucci parts, pretty cool. Gucci parts. This is probably like my most Gucci gun, including my Denver, ARs. Yeah. yeah, really nice barrel. <laughs> the part, the part, parts aren't off wish. So yeah, that's fairly low bar. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there there are no uh, no name uh, parts on here. They're all name parts, name brand parts. Wow, everything. Hey, Drew, everything that what have they done to you? I don't even have a scope on it. I have to do that, but you uh, will. I just put, I just put together this together like last night. I got it at nine o'clock. I'm like, I'm gonna have this thing put together for the show. So I whipped it together last night, and uh, pretty easy, pretty easy to put together. Mm-hmm. Now I need to like reload some nice. six five and quick because I should probably take it out to the range this weekend. Yeah, uh, I was just just occurred to me today. I haven't even considered going to the range to shoot mine yet. You got one of those? Well, I got my. Um, my renegade, but it I built it in 7.62 by 40 WT. Yeah. Why haven't you taken that to the range or done something with it? Um, I was finishing up a bunch of work, work, work stuff, but now I've got a month of not demanding, demanding work, just regular demanding work. So hmm. and Muffin just sent me a text yesterday saying we need a practice day or whiskey and cigars day. And I was like, why not both? Just got to make sure we both. order those activities correctly. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I got to admit, I, I might have cracked a beer or two while I was uh, while I was making this thing just because I was in a rush to like get her all ready. It was very well. You're allowed to have you're allowed to have two of the three, but you can never have all three at the same time. You remember that rule, right? 
beer, <laughs> weed, and beer. acid, and putting the gun together? What's the and triangle of drugs that you can do while you're putting a gun together? Okay. Again, you're just taking it, and you've just, like, not even a, let me attempt to even begin and just went, nah! Carry on. Came, came with a real nice owner's manual. Look at this. They got, like, pictures on how to do stuff, and oh, yeah. Look at all did, that. Did it pop up? What's that? That was your did background. pop up like your high school textbooks did? No. No. That's too bad. Very nice glossy manual that I didn't really need, but it was nice to, to see that they it had It has one of those. pictures and no words. Perfect not, only, guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, not only did Good. I need the manual, I had to make a phone call when I was putting mine together. Uh, really? yep. Did they use a screw-in bolt catch? Is that the, like, instead of a pin? No, it was, the, it was the part that went over the the journal on the barrel to plug the gas the gas uh, hole. I was like, what is this extra bit for? Oh, you didn't know what it was for. I see. Yeah. I just like, yeah, just put it on and torqued it down. Well, what I did is yeah. uh, the journal on my barrel is an oh, odd. Yeah. yeah, it's like an AR-15 oh. profile, but it's got the larger 308 type of journal. So... Mm-hmm. I forget what the Dave, what are the gas journal or the gas blocks? 0. 0.750 and is there a nine one or something? There's a couple. I don't know the diameters. It's yeah, like there's like a small years. one, then the standard one, then the big one, the big one's what I had to go with. So all I did was take my gas block <laughs> when the gun was a gas gun and rotated it 180. Yep. Yeah, yep. that'll work. Uh yeah, so that's on. I'll take that to the range this weekend. Um, I put out some videos. I put one out on the Magnus. You always put out. Uh, I'm, I am a, a giver. Uh, <laughs> beast. <laughs> I put out a video on the Magneto Speed. Those M100 game camps. Oh, they're so bad. <laughs> but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, guess I still got some video of a moose at at, uh, at my brother's place, which is kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, and then I'm. I put out uh, some videos on disassembly, just the disassembly on the Terra TM9 and the uh, NP34. And the reason why I did that is I'm still waiting on the reg certificates. I think there's some problem at the government that they're not letting in on. I called them up. I'm like, yo, I want my reg certs. When would you buy it? Mm, March 7th. Oh, it says here that it was printed on the 10th. Okay, well, they Where didn't get it? here. On my desk right here. I mean, it's in the mail, sir. Yeah. Uh, well, and... <laughs> I talked to another buddy of mine and he's been waiting three weeks. His transfer was mm-hmm. done three weeks ago. He hasn't got his. I talked to another buddy of mine, two and a half weeks for him. Cause I've been buying basically like a handgun a week recently. <laughs> They're cheap. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I haven't got a single reg cert. I would love to take like any of these guns to the range, put some rounds through them so I can do these reviews. But uh so my theory, my theory on that is they're just now that they've changed the rules that you can't use the, transfer as the reg they're just waiting a long time for everybody to get impatient so they can bust people it's a complete dick move it's a dick move just for the sake of dick moves it's a new way for the government to screw with gun owners yeah i i tend to agree because uh yeah taking like three weeks like in the u.s they have a a waiting period but it's like i already have like uh, more than a couple handguns in my safe like getting me in uh, if i get another one it's not like i'm gonna go rush out and do something rash already that i See, already could have done that's why they should just be at the store like they well we can't do that well you did it during the long gun registry you just said take it home right here and now and you were good to go so it should work exactly the same way because i talked to somebody at the cso's office and they said oh it's because we need to do additional background checks and you know check everything out i'm like you're opening a mm-hmm. database and you're going owner click new owner click save that's all you're doing it's probably four mouse clicks yeah don't lie to me there's no reason this should take more than half a second Mm -hmm. at the gun store Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh the reason is made up gun control matt loretch said that he did one on the 17th of march and he just got it today that's ridiculous his a little bit faster than me but that's about a month yeah wait matt loretch bought another gun (laughs) i'm assuming he said he just did (laughs) a surprise (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah anyways that's uh that's what i've been up to so i could take the six five because i don't need a registration certificate for it but uh all my other uh cheap and cheerful handguns have to <laughs> stay cheap and cheerful. safe well i thought i don't know if they're cheerful but our- look you cheerful sparkles <laughs> not even heart. it, does look it looks like it looks like communist tears 
<laughs> uh, it's, the it's communists got some, start oh, crying. The that's what I did. Like, Ooh, we have your cash. Speaking of communism, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I ordered some grips for my other one that's got the crappy plastic grips. I ordered some uh, wood laser etched ones from China. Uh, and I ordered... La- laser etched with oh. a hammer and a sickle? Yeah, I expect, I expect <laughs> for... No, they said they say Sig Sauer on them, so therefore it's a Sig. Uh, it increases the value of the handgun. <laughs> Uh, so and I also got a etched on them. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll get them uh, executed. Um, and I also got a ten dollar holster. Nice, which I'll also use. <laughs> nice. Is that flip better flop better. or cross? Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to do that one time. Get to do the flip flop holster. Just like stick a gun in there. Amazing. Covers the covers the trigger. Covers the trigger. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Hip sick legal. You yeah. wouldn't want to like go to the bathroom. The yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. 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 Awesome. All Anyways. good there, yeah. Adriel? Yeah, that's it for me. Awesome. All righty, Dave, what have you been up to? Uh, I called dibs on Adriel's Maverick and made Trevor sad, so that was a pretty good week. I enjoyed that. Um, the opportunity and... to make me sad brings you joy. <laughs> it does. You're... You're a bastard. I kind of am, actually. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> you tears... don't have to take pride in it. <laughs> your, your tears and anguish sustain me. Sustain you, yes. yes. <laughs> My anguish. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Uh, what else did I do? I didn't do any shooting stuff, but I did send out assorted emails to ORA members. Uh, lots of texts and bitching and texts from people going, wait, I'm an extremist now. Sweet. Due yeah, to yeah. Bill Blair's idiot statement. So did you of, uh, c- carry on? Then I have a question. So, yes, lots of emails back and forth about that. And uh, attended the ORA AGM. So the Ontario Rifle Association decided to, because we had no shooting last year, if you remember last year, it's 20 bucks for your membership for the year this year. So that was pretty good. Sounds like the opposite of what I was about to rant about. So um, gun owners supporting gun owners is so unusual um, in this community. What you sent out all these assorted emails and texts to the ORA to you know share knowledge and try and spread things Love. across the community and stuff. And did you get banned or blocked or anything for any of that? Blocked from what? From trying to share information with other gun owners and spread oh, knowledge throughout the community. <laughs> God damn right, I'm going there. No, I did not, Trevor. What happened to you? <laughs> Nothing, but Kelly got banned from a Facebook group from some Saskatchewan oh, hunters. Shit. Which ones are they, Kelly? We're fine. We're not fine. This Anyways. shit has gone on. Ah, you can just mute yourself or <laughs> your are you talking off or something. Myself. You don't want me are to you, rant about are, the fact are that you, you got minim- banned, but I'm are you, min- are you minimizing me? No, I'm trying to <laughs> shut you up. So you got another <laughs> feminist term for it? Let's hear it. Listen, so marginalization marginalize sandwich. your yap for a minute <laughs> is, is that what you put on the sandwich no it's just <laughs> so okay you know oh, what? that's funny oh no. god now, shut up i gotta tell this story so <laughs> one of the things that have always irked me since i've been involved in the firearms community is how we're a bunch of catty cutthroat jealous backstabbing bunch of bastards and it happened again just recently like Kelly's been promoting the hell out of Slamfire Radio and social media to generate interest in episode 400. Now, it's not just about our egos. We share information with the listeners from across Canada, from things that they're doing, things they want us to share. It's not just about what Trevor did this week in guns, which, as we know, is little to nothing as of late. But they banned her, kicked her off of the page. No warning. No message, no nothing. Like, okay, if your Facebook group is just to talk to your members about your stuff, well, you can adjust your settings that way, but you haven't. So that means anybody can post. If you don't like what somebody's posting, gun related or not, be a goddamn man, step up and send a message and say, hey, lay off with the slam fire stuff. Your pod show, your podcast sucks and we don't want you to spread it on our web page. And Kelly be like, cool, man. Thanks. No problem. But instead, the chicken shit bastards, instead of reaching okay. out and opening up a dialogue, just like bander without yeah. any communication. So question on that, Kelly, you said you're good. Did you guys fix that? No, I'm oh, still this banned. would be hilarious. No. Yeah, there you go. Still bad. But that being said, they don't want promotions. But that being also said, uh, you know, how do you know they don't want promotions? Because they actually sent a reason afterwards why they banned me. Mm-hmm. 
anyways okay but that being said that being said you know uh i can understand that but did they unban you no slam fire is all of it we're not just we're trying to spread some information uh it's not about self-promotion, although this is the 400th episode. The Sunfire is, we're trying to actually get some information out there for gun owners everywhere. So I spread the message wide and far and, you know, just. And it's you, bad enough the community didn't embrace it and want to support your efforts. They just okay. said no posting here for you without any communication whatsoever and it's a bullshit chicken shit move That's they explained fine. that after the fact they should have unban you and now you can follow that page and maybe learn some stuff and with pick up some things that other people are sharing but it's like no this is why we banned you okay and you're still banned okay it's the 400th episode let's be happy about shit instead of eh, i can't when this <laughs> stuff happens <laughs> There's it's something bullshit. wrong on the internet. Trevor can't be happy about that. No, oh my God. this shall not pass. This is a gun show, and the gun community eats their own. And this is why we keep losing in the public and with the government. And I would until... say there's there's far worse examples of the gun show eating our own. Oh, absolutely. Our, our gun rights are. are suing each other over <laughs> logos and and uh, and then taking yep. hacks at each other at, at any given uh, opportunity. Never... Exactly. That's wanted way to worse. see the other group destroyed much way worse but this is just another example that happened recently and it just triggers me and makes me want to smash the go button but you're right adriel there's far worse examples you'll never see one anti-gun group sue another this is why they're winning <laughs> they have a common goal take our shit they don't care how the other group wants to do it we shouldn't care how the other group wants to protect our rights but instead they're suing each other that's sue each other because they don't lose. have they don't have any money how do you how do you sue a group well, that has no money? It's no point. You know, uh, oh. the, the point well, is why don't not we, trying to why eliminate don't we, each other. Why don't we talk about how we can fix this? Why don't we all support each other, share information and share like things yeah. like Slam Fire Radio, whatever podcast is out there, get on some great guests don't sue each other don't infringe upon a people's ability to participate in different events and try something new just don't be dicks there you, you go know, you, you <laughs> met you like general good life good life right, Lesson right there good life kelly. Skills. don't right. be a dick now kelly you touched on one that i think that actually one part of this community has been really good at and that is podcasts yeah we podcasts as a rule ones. Podcasts, as a rule, don't uh, crap on each other on the air. I've never heard a pro-gun podcast tear up another pro-gun podcast on the air. Yeah. The occasional little <laughs> dig from someone who you know personally and you know it's in jest, but like you never heard anybody on Slamfire say, for the love of God, don't listen to podcast X. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we've don't been go good listen to the all. Just go and listen to them all. You can pick and choose what you like and you don't like. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the point is, I've never heard the shows try and destroy each other. No, you know, there's enough. There's enough listeners to go around. We Lift don't have each to, other up, share right? The love. Exactly. So, anyways, never, never do that again, Kelly. Please, <laughs> yeah, please. But anyway, <laughs> just, hey, Gavin, <laughs> share the love. Pisses me off. And <laughs> if any of those Saskatchewan admins are listening, you need to change your policies because that was some bullshit. <laughs> Kelly, what did you do besides get kicked off of Facebook groups? I shared a lot. <laughs> so this past week, I finally got out of isolation. It was fantastic. Went over to the Kincaid's ranch and we had barbecue, like barbecue brisket. Kelly's father is teaching Kyle how to do smoked brisket. Oh my God, it was mm. so good. I just ate brisket until it was coming out my ears. Not only did I get to see Kyle and Kelly, but I also got to see uh, some of our other friends, Lori and Robert, who are part of the CCFR. So I got to hang out with them and then also got to chat with Kelly's father, who actually supplies some of the stuff for Project Maple Seed. So I got to meet him in person. It was awesome. And mm. her mom too. So it was nice to meet them. The other thing that I was doing all this week was I had been lining up some guests for upcoming episodes. So I'm super excited about some of the guests that we're having, uh, particularly about mental management and also long range shooting for 22 LLRs. So we got some really good uh, guests coming up. The 
other thing that I did was I did another update on the CCFR Gunny Girl calendar for 2022, the call out. Deadline is only 15 days away. Get your submissions in. You can message me here or you can email me at slamfireradio at gmail.com or you can send me a message on Facebook as well. That's about it. Other than, you know, Ipsic, the Black Badge course, I was talking to Henri about some things about that. Oh, and I got another thing that's happening, but I don't really know if, okay, yeah, maybe. So the ladies from the QCIF women's division, we're going to actually, we're going to do a podcast this summer just to, you know, spread the wealth a little bit. So I don't have enough to do. I'll that makes start. sense. I know, exactly. I said, is this a one of or is this like all the time? And they're going, no, it's a one of I'm going, thank God, because I can't do it all the time. <laughs> um, I'm in. And I That's do it. Yeah. And I have one more thing that I'm just currently working on with Kelly. We're, you know, it's Kelly Square. We do everything together. So that's coming up soon. I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be about, but I take it on something else. So you know what? (laughs) I can't say no. That's it. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) You say no to me a lot. (laughs) That's true. Well, that's you. All that copious spare time you've got. Right? Yeah. From 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Wide open. (laughs) <laughs> wide open it's, it's all open. those all those two hours a day you sleep i mean come on you could cram something in there yeah yeah anyways that's it all right cool let's uh let's jump into upcoming events then which is sponsored by telos alpha telos alpha is a canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the fire vertical they help with business processes strategic planning websites e-commerce and Battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. You can learn more about Telus Alpha by going to their website at telusalpha.com. Manitoba, Toba, Toba. You ever been to an event with a Manitoba team and they start chanting that? It's pretty, it's pretty infectious. If you are interested in bringing Project Maple Seed event to your range, reach out to your shoot boss, Ryan, at Manitoba at MapleSeedRifleman.com. Alberta events is Alberta at uh, MapleSeedRifleman.com. Ontario, Ontario at MapleSeedRifleman.com. And BC, BC at MapleSeedRifleman. Guess what? What? You guessed it, dot com. Com. Yes. And so. Nova Scotia and New Brunswick are stay the hell out of our province. No, the Brunswick right. right. are taking emails too. They're starting to organize events. So, because. Oh, are they? Yeah. So, hmm. hey, Adriel, did we shorten the Brunswick to NB? I was or talking was to our guy just the other day. I'll take a look. New Brunswick. I, I think it is you New should. Brunswick at MapleSeedRifleman.com. We have our season <laughs> up and running. A lot of people, I got so many emails this last week. I've been spending more time on emails than actually doing events and different things. Uh, a lot of people are, are asking about some of the events that we're posting. We're posting events when they become available. Some of them have sold out within our membership. So membership does have its privileges. But other things things so if it's a public event and there's spaces available get in there right now we're limiting space because of <coughs> covid and if covid restrictions open up because of covid we'll... or because of restrictive government policies about the flu exactly <laughs> so <laughs> if... i think i think the ones like the ones after say june will open right up yeah. because yeah. at least in alberta here they're saying everyone who wants a vaccine can get one by the end of june as soon as I get vaccinated, wow, I, am, I am just doing whatever the F I want. Well, according to uh, our... Anyway, no, not doing it. Don't care. All right. <laughs> CCFR Legal Challenge Fundraiser. Before we talk about this, I have to read you a message I received today from the owner of DC Armory. It says, I'm getting messages about a contest to win a Grey Birch <laughs> 1022 receiver. Apparently, it was said on Slamfire Radio that I'm having a contest. Uh, what can you tell me about this? Oh, come on, like, you need to say oh, in the accent. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I replied and said, uh, well, my friend, I don't know what to tell you, but maybe I think you should probably talk to Kelly. <laughs> You've been voluntold by Kelly. So, yeah. And then Kelly goes back to Denny and says, apparently Trevor wasn't talking to you. <laughs> Here's the details. And I sent him the information. When so. I sign off, I check out <laughs> so, <laughs> so whatever deals it's like listen if we're drinking and drunk oh, trevor God. if we're drinking and drunk trevor does something you don't like well guess what saturday morning sober trevor doesn't want to hear it you're gonna have to wait 
about six more hours to talk to drunk Trevor. You take it up with him then. All right. It's not the sober Trevor problem. Podcast Trevor may have made a deal for Denis. Teacher Trevor forgot all about it. So Denis needs to contact me right now during podcast Trevor, who also might happen to be drunk Trevor. And we'll, we'll sort it out. Either way, I'm still going to say contact Kelly. So it seems to yeah. me that Denis should just listen to the show more often. And then he'd know what he's been voluntold for. <laughs> ultimately this, this isn't is really Denis. kelly's problem either this is a Denny problem this is a Denny problem yeah, yeah. this is Denny's yeah, fault 100%. thank you dave yeah you're there welcome. you Denny, stop your whining and do what you're told listen no, to show. i forwarded it on to Denny, and i even created a nice beautiful document that he could print out and put it there but i did oh, nice. put it back i put it back on trevor saying trevor's got to manage this and go in and people actually if they're going to donate cash he needs to be able to manage that. Oh, I hope I make can sure get in you, there soon. Make sure you take their names and their contact info because right now, odds are pretty good. Just saying. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So here's the let me let me actually do this now that we've you know made fun of everybody except for like Dave. So CCFR Legal Challenge Fundraiser. Here's a couple of ways to win a Graber Solutions Limited Edition CCFR engraved CLR receiver. One. Make a donation to the CCFR Legal Challenge through their website. Send us a photo of the donation or visit our sponsor, Armory DC Gunsmith, and make a donation. Our thanks goes out to Gray Birch Solutions for donating these receivers and supporting our community and the CCFR. Our thanks go to the CCFR for taking on this legal challenge and supporting firearm owners in Canada. The draw date is the 27th of May. And uh, so far, we've got some people ponying up. Josh V, 100 Bones, Anthony N, 300 Bones, and Cole M, 5 Buckaroonies. Thank you, guys. Every donation counts because it's a monumental task we're engaged in. So, all right. Anything else before I move on to this next part? Okay. Slam Fire Radio. Oh, no. That's French for announcement, Dave. <laughs> Do you have a face for radio? Are you willing to work for scale? Well, we're looking for a part-time host, specifically someone who can fill in when one of us cannot make it. We're hoping for someone who will round out or compliment the rest of us and our and our disciplines. If you're interested, here's what we would like you to do. Submit a voice message and a brief bio about yourself and why we should pick you. You can send the message and bio to slamfireradio at gmail.com or Facebook. Deadline for submissions, 15 days from now, April 30th. I'm not saying you got a lot of competition, but Gallon wants the job. So Mm. there's that. He tells better stories than most of you out there. Yeah, but we're not allowed to have them with our explicit Patreon. We will rejuvenate (laughs) our Patreon. (laughs) I'm gonna have the, I gotta put the explicit tag on all on all episodes. All right. Sign up for Patreon so you can hear story time with Gallon. Wait a J for Gallon. Yeah. So can we get can we stop for just a second? To, uh, Doug Roddenbush wants to know if he gets entries for each donation to the CCFR challenge. Yeah, you do. Mm. Every time you donate and but don't do a dollar and and then <laughs> and then another dollar. I was going to donate a hundred bucks anyway. That, so. And if no, you need man, to, you can't. You, you just if, said yes, and then you said and no. And if you need to know why, go back to about fifteen minutes ago when I said, "Don't be a dick." Okay. <laughs> Hashtag don't be. Hey, a dick. are you uh, are you logging how much they're donating? Yeah. Okay. I will weight it based on how much you've donated. Then it doesn't matter how many times you've donated; it just matters there the amount. Go. Okay. Yeah, see, you can't screw the system. Adriel is the system. Yeah. Yep. Start Pure capitalism. No big Pay to dick. play. Uh, <laughs> you think you're a dick? Well, we have an Adriel. That's true. We do. Yeah. Adriel's not a dick, though. Adriel's probably the least dickish of all of us. And I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for identifying as a girl. Would you like to tell us what your pronouns are now? Doesn't mean we you can't, can't be a dick. Right? I know a lot of chicks that are dicks. Yep, it's 2020. <laughs> Some or 2021. Just, yeah, a chick with a dick? Because it kind of. Yeah, I was no, going there right. too, Trevor. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> yeah, no. And I'm okay with that. It. The Dixie chicks. The dick chicks. Yeah, okay. Don't hurt yourself. Are you done? <laughs> Stretching a bit there. You're, you're yep. okay. You, you worked got... out. <laughs> okay, Dave. Stop cooperating with him. I'm going to put you two each in your own corner. 
All right. Adriel's on my side. <sighs> Adriel, I'm in this he is corner. on your side of my camera, actually. He's far right, and you're sort of in the middle with Trevor, and then I'm at the left. Did you guys know that we're a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee? The coffee is roasted in small batches and is quite honestly some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. Send it to your house by going to www.boltactioncoffee.com. Discount code SLAMFIRE. Yeah, and they are the sponsor for New Gun Stuff. Adriel, take yeah. it away. Huh? Jared 180, J180. This has come with a sub. Like, will I get Subway sandwiches if I get a Jared 180? How does this work? <laughs> How old are you? Oh, my God. Younger than you. <laughs> Don't go there. Well, then you're in trouble. <laughs> no, shoot. <laughs> I am a target in this audience. <laughs> I can't remember if I if I talked about these last week or not. Uh... You sent us something in, a, in our in our chat there, but I don't know if you talked about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Jard, uh, they make that wacky looking nine millimeter, the boxy looking one. And they also make like, Oh, it's packs pronounced jarred, not Jared. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, they're making a one eighty. It's it, the, the takedown on it's kind of weird. Uh, it's like the Maple Ridge army style rather than like a hinge hinge open style. Okay. So that's, that's uh that's a thing. It would be, it would be Do nice like to get it? another one eighty. Uh, I don't know yet. They're right. uh, they have a non-restricted FRT. So they can mm. start selling them here. Um, so I would like to see them here, but I imagine they're going to be selling them in the U.S. as well because the U.S. market is uh, insatiable as of late, as of late as in in the last two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know if I don't know when we'll be able to get any, uh, but when we do, they're not restricted. Yep, so oh. they'll sell like hotcakes. They're not Canadian made. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Nope. Did you? Nope, Chart is uh, nope. U.S. And Jared is going to make a 180. Why would they, why would an American company bother making a 180? I wonder. Why'd Brownells make a 180? Yeah. Uh, like the, uh, well, they Brownells got ones. the pistol like because they don't have a buffer tube. You can do a pistol with them uh, fairly easily. So that's one reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's it for me. Yeah. It's another yeah, 180. That's a good. That's some pretty yeah. good logic. Okay, and uh, now are you going to tell us a bit more about the Benelli Nova Speed that's uh, new no. that uh, you stole you my thunder? Already, you stole my thunder. Uh, all right, on it. sorry. I've already talked I did, about. I did not check the new gun section when I did the sponsorship right. section. You got it's a two for one. Two birds with two one fur. with one Benelli. Uh, all right, what's True North Arms up to then? Uh, they got a bunch of stuff for the 180s now, which are actually there's a couple of parts in here that haven't been uh, available aftermarket anti walk pins. So like they, they've got a weird width, right? Both the WSMCR yeah. and the WK180, they're a little bit wider. So you need different trigger pins. So most people have just been using the ones they come with. You lose those, you got to get them from the manufacturer or something. True North Arms has some. They're anti-walk. So that's nice. That's not something that's been available. Uh, they're also selling external bolt releases. Uh, and those external bolt releases are relieved for the trigger packs. So um, if you get a WK180 and mm. you want to put a trigger pack in there, you can. But then you got to like get your file out and file away at the uh, bolt release because it's got this little spot that'll engage. Um, these ones already come pre-relieved, which is kind of nice. And they've also got some slot covers. So if you run your charging handle on the right-hand side and you want to cover up the slot on the left or vice versa, you can do that kind of thing. Kind of nice. Kind of nice. And then, uh, oh, I, yeah, I, I totally didn't bring this up. Uh, G4C. They've got a great deal on Shadow Ones. Let me just show what they've got here. What the I think. heck? That, that is sexy. I'm oh, be, they're uh... out of stock already? <clears throat> I'm too late. I'm too late. I hate when this happens. So you need to buy really late. cheap pistols and then one of these and compare them. And then one of those. It's uh, for our <laughs> audio listeners. It's a CZ75 SP01 Shadow. Nine millimeter. It says engraved, and I guess that makes it expensive. Uh -huh. It's sure yeah. engraved. Yep. Yeah. And what's the price on this, Adriel? It's eleven thousand dollars, give or take. A dollar. I'm sorry. That's how much? Eleven thousand. What, what was it? Eleven. Not, one, not one, one thousand one hundred. Eleven. Eleven thousand. No, no, not one thousand one hundred. Eleven of the thousands. You take a thousand. Thousand. And you add ten more to it, and that's the price of this gun. But you see, when I look at this, I'm thinking that Nicaraguan drug lords could probably afford that. Huh. Yeah, yeah. And this is the only person who really should have it. I think so. And Elvis, maybe Elvis. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
strong Elvis vibes off this one. Um, Use it to turn um, off your TV. Why not a Shadow 1? Why not a Shadow 2? Mm. Are they still producing the Shadow 1, I wonder? Yeah. Anyway, it's ridiculous. They're they're still producing them. Weird. It's, it's, It's absurd. So one of our listeners should go buy one of those and then send it to Adriel so he can review it. Yeah, it's maybe on the opposite end of the spectrum of what he's currently working with. I'll, I'll compete it's a shadow uh, one, that which one is... versus the Nork. <laughs> head to head. So you take a you take an old design that's now obsolete. Uh-huh. You put a bunch of flowery, viney carvings on it. And you put an extra ten thousand dollars on it, and it's wait, like, wait. Well, I could, it. I could get the Dremel, and I could Dremel this thing, and then well, compare yeah, it to uh, electro pencil, right? No, I'll just, dr- I'll just Dremel with a little diamond dremel tip. It. Yeah, I'll just Dremel the shit yeah. out of it. Put a little like scoop <laughs> whatever in there. Yeah, polish it let, up. And- you'll let the, the 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 man remember it was made. It'll basically introduce COVID and cancer right into your lungs. <laughs> <laughs> uh how'd you get it i i i inhaled np22 dust while trying to make it worth eight dollars more <laughs> with my it with actually lost ingredient. its value <laughs> it's impossible <sighs> oh goodness all right cool well let's wrap that segment up then and jump into our main topic so our main topic is us Talking about the fact that, you know, Slime Fire Radio has made it to 400 episodes when a lot of people didn't think we'd make it past four, actually. But where's that guy now bittering in Ontario and not podcasting? So screw that guy. Anyway, um, at what point, Adriel, are we going to do the audio clips? Is that going to be during listener feedback or are we going to do that here? Uh, When do you want to do them? Probably... The main topic is about 400, so I don't yeah. know. Let's, Six sprinkle, one. let's sprinkle them through. Sprinkle them through? Okay. Like are you going to play them on demand here, Adriel, or splice them in later? Uh, I think I need to... No, let's play them on demand. Okay. Um, can I just play them all one after another, though? Because then... Then let's do it during... Let's do it during listener feedback, then. Okay. Okay. All right. So... For the main topic, we decided that we would share some of our favorite memories from the past 400 episodes. I realized that three or four of my memories actually predate Slamfire, so I just took them out. But um, yeah, I kept I kept three three pretty good ones in there. So, um, but I'm not going to go first. I'm going to ask Adriel to uh, to take it away. So, Adriel, what's what's some of the things that stick out in your mind from the past 400 episodes? Uh, I had a lot of fun doing the, uh, fake Trevor and Matthew episode where, uh, uh, I, I spliced in a bunch of audio of you guys saying things that you yeah, said at one point, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, basically I just put it, put a bunch of, a bunch of dead air in where I'd ask you guys questions and, uh, and then afterwards go and splice in the answer myself. And, uh, <laughs> you guys said, some it was amazing. Things. How much how much time did it take to produce that episode? Yeah, that was a good two, three hours. Because I had to comb through old episodes to find the right audio clips. And that yeah. what took the most time. Oh, that was good. It was good. That's a that classic thing it. to do. It's like the time uh, on The Simpsons when they showed that <laughs> interview with Homer where they did all the editing and the clock and the wall kept changing. Yeah, It's that yeah. kind of editing technique. Yeah, Adriel basically has taught the world that he can make you say anything if you've ever been near him when he has a recording device. Yeah, don't give don't give Adriel any audio. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. So okay. Um do you you don't happen to remember what number that was or when you put that out in case some new listeners want to go back and hear that foolishness, do you? Uh if I would have been thinking and if I would have been thoughtful, I would have wrote it down right there. So I could have mentioned it. Yeah. So I'm now you're not the least of the dicks. No, I'm not neither. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So in typical Slamfire fashion, screw you, listeners. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah, work it out. This amazing thing that Adriel did that we all enjoyed, but we can't help you find it. Yeah, I'll try to you're find gonna have it. To, uh, you're going to have to edit yeah, that in and insert your name into this episode. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. 400 episodes. That's the only thing you wrote down. Fantastic. But. So your most memorable 
thing in the past 400 was something that you did that was epic. Good for you. And you guys weren't on. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's all about me, bitches. It's all about Adriel. My it's favorite like episode in 400 was the time you two jerks weren't there. <laughs> oh, sweet. Awesome. All right. Cool. Anything else before we go on to uh, the number one lady in podcasting? Oh, it's called Kelly. All right. Yeah, Kelly. Me. <clears throat> yeah, it is you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All okay. right, Kelly. 400 so, episodes. And most so in, in, the, in the 400 episodes, some of my most favorite times are prior to me coming on the show. I used to... I used to send in emails to Trevor and you guys used to read them. And I used to tell you that I would fall asleep on Thursday nights to Trevor talking in my ear. It was weird. Anyways. That is weird. <laughs> so he's not the only one though. I'm not gonna lie, but anyway. <laughs> so uh you all started every single Thursday night saying good night kelly and it was my favorite time of the week you guys would actually say good night to me so and then not only you guys started doing it other then shows. the other yeah. the other shows started doing it and listeners started doing it and it was awesome i really really and you know look yeah, forward yeah. to we my, can kill a thing we can beat it to death that's i know for sure yeah. okay so and uh, once I came on, one of my favorite things to do was, or one of my favorite episodes is what Trevor was talking about previously, where he shaved his legs live on air. And the reason is because we rose, raised some money for a great cause. But not only that, it showed me that I had very, I had a lot of influence over Trevor and anything that he did, because I promised him, and he's cheap, by the way, too, because I promised him an X22 Hunter stock for his 1022, which he values and will never sell and uh, <laughs> because he values your friendship oh it's a symbol of your friendship yeah he would never he sell it for money he would never sell it for money Priceless. and uh to spend also, on toy cars. I would never do that. Oh my God, my heart. Oh, no. <laughs> You've broken my heart. That moment also proved that Trevor <laughs> looks almost as good in stockings but we won't get into that part how long did it take you to grow back that hair by the way oh months by the time summer rolled around like i had stubble <laughs> it was weird oh nice I, and then it's touching your pants exactly yeah uh, yep. that's why that's why you wore shorts kelly like. this is actually a, a an awesome memory for me too so before you move on to your next one give me a second oh come on okay talk about it because i oh, you i am you're, ready you're good to with go that on. okay yeah, yeah. so during that episode I was yakking about Miss September and all oh my Jesus, how amazingly hot she was and gorgeous. And I like I professed my on air love and crush for Miss September before the show was even. Probably told. has a name. Yes, she does have a name, but that's she's amazing, wait, by the way. Wait for okay. it, Dave. Okay. Before the show was even over, I got a friend request from Miss September. She was watching. Yeah, she was watching. Well, here's the here's the thing. I had my months mixed up. I was going on and on <laughs> about this chick that I had fallen in love with in the What's calendar. In check. <laughs> Go ahead. Who was actually December, but for some reason I had said September, and all the while Miss September is watching the show and then sends me a friend request. But you love her. Well, to my surprise, she was way hotter and way cooler, and I met oh, them no. both. And uh, Miss December was pretty hot too. She's she's not she's not hotter than Yolanda. No, well, no, Yolanda is. I mean, I will amazing. fight you right now through the internet. I'll send you pictures of me and Miss December in bed together. <laughs> Deposit to the bank. bank well, check. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> kidding. Not really. Okay. I'm kidding. Not really. Calendar just sold a lot more copies for 2022. <laughs> so uh, I so then I'm in Calgary. He's totally doesn't know what to say now. Go ahead. Where am I? I'm in Edmondson. What time is it? So I, I'm somewhere. I can't even anyway. Well, Miss September knows I'm in town. She drove three hours to come hang out with us and and, and introduce herself. And uh, yeah, and then of course I was. It was all, you know, totally reconfirmed. Smoking hot, super athletic, 
redhead, strawberry redhead driving a blue Camaro pulls up. Oh my God. I thought I was going to get divorced, but she wouldn't have me. So it all worked out in the end, I guess. But anyway, um, it was, I think two years went by. We were chatting on the phone one day for something. And I was like, I have to make a confession. And I told him the story about how I had her in December confused. That's one of my, definitely one of my favorite uh, memories of episode 400 was uh, uh, meeting Yolanda in, uh, at a pub night that we had when we were in Calgary, Edmonton. I can't remember. We're probably in Edmonton, weren't we, Adriel? Yeah, you were. Yeah, uh, you're so, probably in anyway. Edmonton, not Edmonton. Edmonton, I don't think she lives. Oh, there. right. No one wants to go to Edmonton. I'll tell you that COVID, right now. COVID capital of yeah, Brunswick. Exactly. Yeah, so, Mr. Claire. so, yeah. Um, all okay. things, all things, Yolanda. Yeah. All right. Your next are one. You, are, are you done making it all about you? Your next one. <laughs> okay. So, tell me about the co- time you were in bed with Danielle. <laughs> Okay, so I have a couple of guests that I really, really enjoyed. One was Keith Garcia. One because he's a god, but not only that, I, I Jesus, think I, okay. I asked him about you know shooting with uh, Keanu Reeves. But anyways, but the other one that I enjoyed was the one that we just did last week. Christopher Golden. I love that we're branching out, but not only that, he was such a good guest. His and- name is Epstein, by the way. Okay. I don't know if Epstein. you did. You hear that story? No. Do we want to make it elevate you again? You tell the you tell your Christopher Gold story, and I'll tell you why his name's Epstein. Maybe okay. if you're lucky, you're a little saucy right now, so I think you don't deserve it. <laughs> so Chris Christopher Golden, Epstein. I love the fact that our community is so so small, and again, it's six degrees of Trevor Bacon. So that he's one of my all-time favorite guys he was he just loved loved talking about something he's so passionate about uh his eyes lit up i I love seeing that yep so that's me those are some of my favorites that and having the ladies on but yeah that's about it awesome okay now do you want to talk about epstein no epstein steen so okay stein steen um oh Jewish you, listeners on, screaming at the radio only kelly will remember this given her um the era in which she watched television there used to be a tv show called welcome back cotter dave i know you know this show and <laughs> cotter had a class of students referred to uh, um affectionately as the sweat hogs and there was one particular sweat hog by the name of Epstein who was constantly asking questions, constantly, constantly, constantly. And uh, ooh, 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 Mr. Kata, Mr. Kata, ooh, ooh, Mr. Kata, pick me. And he was, he was that guy, right? And uh, we named Christopher, me and his father. I'm not sure which of us came up with it. But anyway, it started when he was like 12 because everywhere we would go, if we were doing a coaching session or a clinic, anything archery related, like the boy wouldn't shut up. And it was constantly with the questions. So one of us came up with the nickname Epstein and it stuck. <laughs> Even other archers would start nice. to call him Epstein. Yeah. So it means yeah, something else. Such now. a good, good man. Huh? It means something else now. Epstein. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It sure does. <laughs> yeah. So Epstein, if you're listening, don't kill yourself. I, I thought that's where you were going with that joke. Actually, oh. that's the first spot I went because he's yeah, not for dead. sure. No, this was before Jeffrey Epstein was oh. taking everybody to whore Island. <laughs> Oh my god! So, I like that. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> Which one? The Whore Island? Yeah, Whore Island. No, nope, that's new. They weren't whores. They were miners. It's unfair to call them whores. Victim Island. Yeah. Victim Island. There Bill, you go. Now we Bill, don't get banned. Bill Bill Clinton flew with Jeffrey Epstein twenty six times in one year. I've never. I I haven't spoken to my mother twenty six times in my life. Like, how do you do twenty six? How do you fly with Jeffrey Epstein twenty six times and not go to Victim Island? I don't. Anyway. Okay, can we bring it back? Circle back. Try. <laughs> no, Try. no, you go back to not being the lead host. Dave, and when Trevor is killed tomorrow, we'll know what happened. <laughs> he suicided himself. Yeah, okay. Two shots in the back of the head. Suicide. Hillary will give the suicide hotline a call and make a request. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, Dave. My favorite, a... my favorite yeah. time in all of the time we've been together is every time we've gotten to record in person together when we've actually been in a hotel room or a B and B or yeah. sitting at the range or wherever we've been. And we've actually recorded in person. Like 
my one of my well the first episode i was ever on was when i randomly showed up and trevor yeah. gave me my nickname yeah. right, new brunswick <laughs> yeah i got out of uh got out of a car with bolivar and a couple other people and trevor Who's said this who the hell is this guy and Brad said some random guy we picked up at the road and i said hi i'm dave and trevor said hi random dave so that's, there you go that's how you came up with your nickname yeah. yeah, and then that night we were sitting up in Trevor's gun uh, next to Trevor's gun room on the sofas and uh, recording Slamfire. They're like, "You want to be on?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Showed up randomly to the podcast. Yeah, no, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. Oh, you're right. And Dave, one of the things that made um, the gun dudes so successful for all those years, they always met in person to record, and the vibe yeah. and the the banter just comes across so much better when everybody's in the same room. I feel anyway. Yeah, I, it does. Right. Cause you're playing off each other and you got stuff going on and you know, throwing things at each other. Yeah. Most of those guys, usually it's guns like here, check out my new Glock 19 and <laughs> whip it across the table. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great to be per. I mean, this is, this is so much fun, but I was so looking forward to coming out to New Brunswick this year and getting to record with everybody in person. I was so excited about that. So soon, soon we'll record together again. Yes. We'll get back to the real normal, not the yep. new normal. Yep, mm-hmm. exactly. So, I'm so looking forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, part two, my second favorite thing about the episode was la- about the 400 was last week with Kelly and Trevor Bacon, because I freaking love that. <laughs> So I actually had to go for a walk and think about it. And when I said I was going for a walk yes, today to think about it yesterday, I actually did go for a walk for like half an hour and just thought about it. So I was trying to work it out. So Trevor, all of us know Trevor. So we're number, we're, we're one degree. Tracy and Rod from the CCFR know Trevor. So they're one degree. Bill Blair was a jerk to both Tracy and Rod in person a couple of years ago. So Bill Blair is two degrees of bacon separation from Trevor. Justin Trudeau knows Bill, so he's three degrees. Justin Trudeau has met Donald Trump. Plus, he has gone to these world leader conventions where, you know, he probably sat at the little kid's table. But nonetheless, he went and he would have met many of the world's leaders, probably most of them. They would be four degrees of separation from Trevor. Most people in the world probably know one of those people in one way or another. So that means that virtually the entire world is five degrees of separation from Trevor Bacon. Now his head's like, it's not going to get through the door. Right? Like, <laughs> Right? Well, Rod and Tracy know all of you as well. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. true. And we've... everyone that they know is then two degrees. And they know a lot of people. And we know a lot of people. And we have a lot of listeners. So all the listeners are one degree of separation as well. So you are pretty much within five degrees of everyone on planet Earth. The the extremist community is pretty tight. It is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. To all of our RCMP listeners, not actually extremists. So uh, intended Hashtag. for entertainment purposes only. Yes. Hashtag non-extremists. Hey, Trevor, what's your favorite moments? Um, very, very early on, we reached out to the actual pod father, Doc Wesson. Mm. So Doc Wesson from the Gun Nation podcast, one of the earliest pro-gun podcasts in existence. And Doc is just phenomenal. Fantastic guy. And um, I wanted him on the show really bad. I, um, while he's on the show, I don't know how the internet works or stuff or things and we're doing some i don't even know what version of software we were using but i was chatting typing to matthew and owen while doc was talking i was nerding out going oh my god doc wesson is on our show right now it's the doc wesson and owen just chimes into the chat and goes you know he's in here too when he's reading this right (laughs) i'm being a little nerd fanboy that was, that was probably a Skype call back then. <laughs> uh, I don't think it was. I don't even know. It probably was. It, it probably, probably was. was. Yeah. So, and then um, probably yeah. my all-time favorite guest was when uh, we had Masada Yuban. Yeah. And uh, it was good. Yeah. 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 Uh, that, that was that was something else. It was 
one of the highlights of podcasting for me was when we had Matt on and he's such a nice guy. Oh, he's such a nice guy. And he has a, uh, just a wealth of knowledge and a lot of what he knows applies to Canadian firearms law as well. And mm. we were reminiscing about uh, Meg 40 and stuff. And I had some Meg 40 stuff in here too, but that actually predates Landfire. That was in the Canadian Reload Radio days. So, um, and then of course, Steve Lee, we, we got to know Steve Lee, back in Canadian Reload Radio because uh, Matthew wanted to use one of his songs in the video and he asked him permission. And Steve's like, you know what, mate? People steal my music all the time and never ask. And you may be one of the only persons ever asked permission. So you got carte blanche, man. Use my music for whatever you want, for as long as you want. And so uh, we were using it on Canadian Reload Radio. And then we um, continued to use it and still use it to this day on Slamfire Radio. I reached out to Steve, hoping we could reconnect for episode 400 in some way. Unfortunately, I didn't hear back from him. I hope all is well. Uh, as we know, Australia has gone through some really stringent mm. gun control and stuff. And Steve was uh, targeted because he's so vocal and so outspoken and an advocate and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where he's at with all of that or his music career, but um he came over here at least twice, stayed in my home, and we took him hunting, and we took him shooting, and just a fantastic human being. I've only met a handful of Aussies, but I loved every one of them. They're just amazing people. So this podcast has given all of us so many amazing opportunities to meet so many amazing yeah. Hardworking, yeah. incredible people, not just smoking hot redheads. I mean, every people from all ages, all walks of life, all sharing that same passion and love for freedom and guns and competition and being united as a community. It's just, it's been a life altering experience podcasting on this show alone for 400 episodes. Never mind the, the other shows that I've been on, either as a host or a guest. Like, we're so fortunate. Um, the listeners, like, we only do it week after week because you guys take the trouble to tune in and support us and cheer us on and keep us going and, and enjoy the content. Otherwise, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I'd get together with these three knuckleheads every week just to hear them talk anyway, but if we can record something decent, put it out for you guys, educate and entertain all the better, but, um, kind of like just, watching a car crash. I think where you just can't look away as you drive by, but you're interested in listening plus right. some education. Yeah. So right. it's like a school bus crash. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh oh, and on that disappointment, nice. let's move into <laughs> listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by our dear friend, Denis, owner of Armory DC Gunsmith. Apparently, he's running a contest where you can win a 1022 <laughs> receiver. You should reach out. Amazing. Thanks, Denis. Yeah. He just keeps giving to the community. So awesome. Armory DC Gunsmith, a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot blowing, park rising, Cerakote finishes, as well as wood and steel refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca. You can follow him on the Facebooks and on the Instagrams. So, Adriel, are you going to kick us off by maybe playing uh, some of the audio messages that we received? I shall try. And All right. You guys will let me know. Trying isn't doing. Share sound. Yes, share sound is what we will do. I'm going to try the first one. You let me know if you can hear anything. Hey, Slamfire crew. Congratulations yep. on 400 episodes. I find it amazing. and can't believe you guys have put up with each other for that long. I mean, that alone is an accomplishment to be proud of. From the different host characters, the interesting guests, and the wide variety of topics. Oh, let's not forget the banter, a.k.a. bickering back and forth. You have built a show that, in my opinion, is a leading gun podcast in Canada. My favorite episode? I can't really say. I mean, there's 400 of them. But I can say that every Thursday, Slamfire puts the cherry on top. Here's to you and another 400. Cheers. <laughs> Sweet. Aww, Thank you, Kyle. Kyle. That's like Kyle it. Warner. Yeah. Awesome. He listens every week. Go, oh, and, go and listen to Asylum Bot podcast. 
All right, next one here. Appreciate you using uh, Audacity, Adriel. It's awesome. Yeah. You like it? That's how I edit the show. Oh. Hey guys, Ian from both CPPs here, Canadian Prepper Podcast and Canadian Patriot Podcast. I thought I'd take a break from puttering around the Doomstead here and chime in for episode Doomstead. 400. Hard to believe nice. how time flies. Congrats on reaching this milestone, guys. I've always really enjoyed listening to you guys discuss whatever, I guess, has been a lifetime interest for me, starting with the Miners FAC at age 15 when I lived in rural Alberta. I still have my Canadian Reload Radio t-shirt too, Trevor. The shooting sports have never not been under attack, yet you guys have managed to keep an energetic spin on things. Despite the roller coaster ride of constantly changing firearms laws, the lack of political support, and, well, public apathy. Trevor, Kelly, and Adriel, you guys have a synergy that's not only enjoyable to listen to, but also manages to educate us and also encourage the sport. Well done, guys. Here's to another 100. Now, being Canadian, I have to say sorry in advance, but now I feel obligated to play the hang-up game on you, Trevor. Oh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> on air hang-up. Sweet. Another amazing guy that I wouldn't have met without the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. awesome. All right, next one from Thanks, uh, Mr. Brian. Hey, Slamfire Gang. It's Brian the Ruiner here. You know, they Means say everything. that all good things must come to an end. And here's Slamfire <laughs> Radio. 400 episodes, still growing strong with no end in sight. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. But seriously, gang. I do wish you continued success and another 400 episodes of fun chatter about all things gun-related in the Canadian community. And for you and all the listeners, please remember, shoot safe, shoot straight, and shoot often. Um, it's important to note that Brian was a host for a, yeah, for a period of time. He mm-hmm. was on for a fairly regular uh regular basis with us for a while yeah so um he contributed in a very uh, meaningful positive way and uh we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge his contribution to the show ran his own podcast for a while too canadian mm-hmm. uh, service conditions and then he yeah, was on his modern rifle and radio his co-hosts though were one full of the short and sketchy they don't follow this tall and old mm. true still look younger than trevor though uh, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> It was a good, right. good show. It was a good, was a good show. Yep. Yeah. Next one's from Rick Woods. Hey, Slamfire. Rick here from Bullseye North. Just wanted to say congratulations on making 400 podcasts. You guys should all be proud of your accomplishment. What a great adventure your journey has taken all of you on. You all inspire, educate, and bring forward what is most important in shooting, having fun. I do miss Owen and Matt, but Kelly and Adriel and all your special guests have filled their places perfectly. From the beginning at Canadian Reload Radio and every episode since, you have changed my life. Some of my highlights are training with Daniel Shaw and Tom Nelson, plus the good times at Trevor's house after each event. The charity shoots have always been spectacular as well. Special thanks to Trevor about talking about Mag 40. He inspired me to travel to Florida and train with Masada Ayub, one of the highlights of my life. And most recently, Maple Seed, thanks to Kelly and her crew. Please never stop doing all that you do. Because what you guys do have a huge impact on people's lives. Tango Yankee. Cool. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. Another, that one. Yeah. Another stellar human being. Mm-hmm. All right. We got Mike Iceland here. Hello from the Reloading Hi. Podcast. Congratulations, gang, on 400 episodes. But holy cow, who's really put up with Trevor for that long? Speaking of that long. I'm going to go in the Wayback Machine and say, good night, Kelly. <laughs> that was compact. I used, got to be on his sh- I used to be on his show. What are you- <laughs> oh, man. Eh. Mm. Oh, he's an RC, by the way. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh. Okay, good. Next up, we got Phil. Hi, I'm Filthy, and you're not. I want to say congratulations to Slamfire Radio on 400 episodes. That's pretty amazing. Dave and Kelly and Adriel, as the current hosts, I really want to thank you for all the work you you put in. But let's not forget the former hosts, uh, uh, Trevor and uh, uh, Matthew <laughs> and the guy who grew green beans and stuff. Anyway, all the best to you guys. Take care. The Empire Rocks. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Green Trevor. Beans. Trevor is my favorite guest on the show. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one's from Jeffries. 
Hey, Slamfire. Uh, CSC Jeff here on the occasion of your 400th podcast. If the audio sounds off, it's because I'm recording this from the toilet, which is uh, where my advertising money goes for being part of this dumpster fire of a podcast. <laughs> and uh, Trevor, stop being poor. Buy some guns, for God's sake. Congratulations, guys. Bye. Jeff Thank would you, call Jeff. me on the regular and be like, this is what I got. Should I just send it? What are we doing? And <laughs> almost always the answer was, yeah, send it. And yeah. we'll settle up tomorrow. Or, and now he calls me and I'm like, dude, I got a tuition payment. I can't. And uh, he hasn't called me in months. He's giving I am toy money. cars. He's just going to get into toy cars so he doesn't go bankrupt. Yeah, so. mm, that'll just get him into bankruptcy. <laughs> Think of the next one I've got here is from Chris Kimball. Hey, this is Chris from the First Focal Plane Podcast. On behalf of Sean, Rooster, and I, happy 400th episode to Slam Fire Radio. Keep your powder dry, and here's to 400 more. And don't forget, it's time to get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Oh, yeah, that was a good ending. Yeah. yeah. Can't believe it's been like 100 episodes already since Christopher Anderson was on here crying about a van or something. Time flies, man. Hey, did, yeah. hey, is that the end of audio? I thought we had one from Sean as well. Uh, is it on email? No, it's through. Oh, you had one job. I had one nope. job, it, and where? Where? Uh, Tell me where. It, it's in. Mm. It's in Facebook Messenger. He sent it to both of us. Oh, yeah. One job. Oh one yeah. Job. Uh. Uh. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking. Anyways. Oh wait. Oh. Oh wait. Oh. Okay. 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 Uh oh, we got video too. Wait, 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 wait. No. Oh. There. Let's pause that there. Let's share with audio that one. Yay. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Oh. Here from the first focal plane podcast. Just wanted to wish you guys a happy 400, uh, 400 episodes. It's uh, it's quite an achievement to make, and I know the work that goes into it. So thank you. You guys are definitely an inspiration to me for starting the show, starting my show, First Focal Play Podcast, and just wanted to congratulate you on 400 episodes. Keep up the good work. Thanks, guys. Except you, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to end. Yes. Let's end Perfect. on a positive note. So for you. a lot of gray hair now, I notice. Yeah. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, now I feel like I need to. <laughs> uh, Thanks again, everyone, for taking the time to send us an audio recording. That was awesome. There are two people missing this evening. We reached out. We tried to connect. Unfortunately, they both had prior engagements they couldn't get out of, and that's obviously McClatchy and Owen. Mm -hmm. So obviously, they send their, their best to you guys. Um would have been awesome to have them on but it is what it is man um so but we can't can't not acknowledge uh my two fellow co-founders so anyway well, mom keep, for 500 right yeah well i made the suggestion so we'll see what excuse they come up with then well i don't have an excuse i mean we can easily map that out how many weeks that's going to be and when that's going to happen and they just need to book it now two and a half you're, years you're not they got two and a half years yeah. yep there yeah. you go. No excuses. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. Okay. Very good. All right. Are we ready to jump into emails then? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's do that. The first one comes to us from Josh V. My favorite episode was number 342 called Cerakote from early 2020. It was the first firearms podcast I ever listened to. Right around that time, my shooting frequency increased dramatically. It grew from shooting a few rounds per year at ducks and deer to shooting thousands and thousands of rounds as a hobby. 19,000 rounds between August and December. I Whoa. started to keep track. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's a meaty shit. number, yep. Meeting Kelly and listening to Slam Fire really sped up my learning curve. When Adriel speaks, I listen. Few have, had, few have as much firearm knowledge as the host of your show. Now, I'm a beta tester for a firearms manufacturer. I have many close ties with people in the shooting community 
and a strengthened political viewpoint. Slamfire has truthfully played a major role in my growth. Thank you all and congrats on 400. And obviously, I donated to the CCFR to support the cause. And winning a, C, a G and B receiver would be a huge bonus. Receipt attached, Josh. Awesome, Josh. Josh. Nice. Thanks, Josh. Oh. Great. That, uh, that made me think about something, too. Uh, everyone what? should, because it's the 400th episode, everyone should donate 400 dollars <laughs> to the ccfr or how, 400 pesos whatever 40 or 40 yeah 40 okay. i don't know what trevor's doing right now mm -hmm. he's like devil horning or something We're about 40 people watching two right two now is four two and two. Oh, i thought you were doing devil horns like, well whichever um, okay yeah go go donate 40 bucks to the ccfr that would be awesome i don't like the way kelly got you to dial that back i think this I 400 was a you, I think there's you folded think, like a cheap uh, shirt cheap or suit. whatever. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think that we're going to be able to achieve more with volume as opposed to yeah, yeah. Four hundred one dollars is better than <laughs> one forty dollar. Yes. What? All right, <laughs> um, Kelly, I'll let you take this one from Spencer. I know how this much is, you like to read. I his love emails reading and this one. Spencer. You can handle. Yeah. yeah, I love reading Spencer's emails. <clears throat> it says. I had a whole thing written up, but there's a deck, a cigar, and a bourbon calling my name, so I'll keep it short. Congratulations to all the hosts, present and past, who made this show such success. Hopefully, you've had have many more left in you guys. Spencer from Smyrna. Ah, oh, yes. That goes way back, man. I've been reading Spencer's emails or listening to them since back in Canadian Reload Radio. That is the shortest thing he's ever written. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the most grammatically correct. No, Spencer usually. No, he's yeah. this is good. Yeah. Yeah. And um he's he's been a long, long time contributor. Like I said, he's been listening and contributing photos and emails going back to Canadian Reload Radio. Yeah. So wow. he, he's yeah. been with That's us awesome. forever. Longer than me. You know, like when did Joe Rogan start? 2009? And Canadian Reload Reload Radio started in what, 2010 or 2011? Something like that. I may be pulling those numbers right out of my butt. Anyway, all right. Uh, Adriel, you yep. want to grab the one from Sean? From Sean. Hey, Slamfire hosts, congrats on the 400 podcast and this huge milestone. I love the content of the podcast and the array of topics covered. Hopefully there's, here's, uh, hopefully there's another major milestone in the future. Cheers, Sean. Oh. Thanks, Sean. Excellent. Yeah. Dave? From Mark P, please. Yes. Hello from Mark P. Hello. I have a crappy memory, but I still love the episode when Matthew gets a new cell phone and harasses Trevor. <laughs> Harassing Trevor seems to be a popular topic. It's a good idea. Yeah, it is. Mark Price, Squire, former stable boy. He's been he's been promoted. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he was so low in the two. You were random, Dave. When this dude showed up, he was like stable boy. He was like cleaning the horse shit out of the stables. That's where this guy was in the pecking order of of squad mates now he's a squire he gets to carry my stuff which some people wouldn't necessarily think is an L, you know a like promotion. a promotion really <laughs> he's now <laughs> able to not only touch my stuff but carry it so uh what do you think should i tell the uh matthew new cell phone story real quick for those that didn't okay. hear it yeah, yeah go ahead because this got involved like this was a conspiracy <laughs> i had a bunch of people working against me on this one i got a text one day some random message, don't even know what it says. I'm like, who's this? Anyway, it played out that basically it was a listener who was stalking me. He even got my wife involved. And I was <laughs> then finding random letters in my mailbox when I would get home from work. <laughs> so not only was this dude texting me at all hours, weird, freaky shit, then I was finding stuff in my mailbox. I was starting to actually get a little freaked out. Yeah. And it was Matthew with a new cell phone. Just wouldn't come up and say, hey, Trevor, I got a new number. <laughs> nope. Bastard. That's awesome. I actually have a good cell phone Trevor story as well. I think I just got to throw it in there. When we were out at the charity match, Trevor was doing the speed shoot and he managed to get an excellent score. Oh my goodness. I love this. So then a bunch of us are over at the speed shoot. Trevor is, and I can see where Trevor is too. Okay. No. From Heller, there's a plateau. So we were sort of on opposite plateaus with like this little swampy area in the middle. So I can see Trevor off in the distance 
And Kelly says, you should write somebody else's name up there. And then you should text Trevor and tell him that this person beat you. So they suggested Rod. I figured that was a bad idea, but we went with Rod anyway. Yeah. And Rod so we was were, okay with that. It was he a said, bad idea. I've seen the man shoot. Shot yeah, him. exactly. We should have picked a random number like Giuseppe right. or something. Anyway. Billy, uh, Billy the kid. So I text. We go write it on the, we get the RSO to change, write, move the scores down, move Trevor down one, put Rod above him with like a point one of a point, point fraction of a second, hundredth of a second. And then I, we're all looking across <laughs> at Trevor, who's like a hundred <laughs> yards away. And he's like walking along. And I text him. I said, hey, Trevor, somebody beat your score. And I see him stop and pull out a cell phone, look at the cell phone, and then start marching. <laughs> <laughs> on the rip and he texts me back and says oh we'll see about that he starts marching along <laughs> that was great here I literally, my money. I literally spent the rest of the goddamn day in that bay trying to beat that stupid score that didn't exist <laughs> you're welcome you liked yep. it <laughs> I yeah, you knew it was, it was fake, awesome. but you did it anyway. It fantastic. Yep. Yeah, it was a good time. I uh, I set good. that high number with a shadow one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, Mark S. Here's an idea. Let's talk about how Furlot is a liberal. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't see this. <laughs> you didn't see this? No, oh seriously. No, seriously. Hear me out. He likes to be heard. Sometimes mm-hmm. this is just talking louder than everyone else or by demanding attention. It doesn't matter if his opinion is right or wrong. He just has to be heard, repeating it over and over so it, so to make it seem as if his topic is more true and grounded in some sort of logical reasoning. Example, mm-hmm. another New Brunswick range hosts an Outlaw 22 match during a complex time of restrictions. Rather than stepping up and hosting his own, he, he belittles certain individuals because their decision is to keep everyone safe. Can't trust those Northerners anyway. Sound familiar? Beards. Men and beards. There's a fine line between a badass ZZ Top biker and a hipster. If you groom it, maintain it, wash it, comb it, shave it, trim it, you have more in common with a hipster platform. Don't give a crap how many flies you caught in it on your bike ride home from work. When you when then you know you've got more in common with Bill Gibson than Chris Salvatore. Does Furlot wow. seem like the type to own a motorcycle and not wash his beard? Then the answer is obvious. ADD, attention deficit disorder. A lot of people suffer from this, but I would argue is primarily a symptom of left of center minded individuals. Need proof? Watch question period during the House of Commons. Sitting when they ask Trudeau anything, he can't keep on topic to save his life. For a lot? I can't shoot guns for weeks or months Therefore, I have little to no interest anymore and regularly skip my duties as podcast host because my studying because I'm studying literature now. What's that? A fancy remote control tr- toy truck? A step deeper. What does your typical leftist do when they don't get their way? Rage quit. Just watch an episode of Louder with Crowder when he interviews people who disagree with him to get a sense of a real rage quit. How does this pertain to Furlot? Let's see. Lost an Ipsic match because you misjudged a mag change during a course of fire? Rage quit. Have a disagreement with your buddies working in an advocacy group? Rage quit them too. Government made up new rules and rather waiting for change of government or standing up against them with your fellow gunnies? Range quit by selling off the entire gun room because if your feelings got hurt. See the trend here? Finally, what's more pro left leaning than being very environmentally conscious? Why, who needs a pavement princess that <laughs> bleeds testosterone when you can have a more environmentally friendly minivan? The Blazers have more in common with a minivan than an SUV. 
no full body frame, inability to tow any amount of weight, next to no ground clearance, etc. Less fuel to burn means a greener world for everyone after all. It's so much safer for my ego, and who needs a manhood anyway? Considering the above, I believe Furlot to be a liberal disguised in plain sight. Think I'm incorrect on the matter? Prove me wrong. Note. This is for entertainment purposes only and is no way, shape, or form to be taken too seriously. If you do, the please count down from 10 before rage quitting. <laughs> Congratulations on 400, guys. Been with you for the last 100 and are part of my weekly entertainment. Keep it up. Travis S. I don't even know who this guy is. It's amazing. <laughs> but you I are going to hunt him down no. now. <laughs> well... He's pretty goddamn spot on. on I know. Everything. Oh, yes. I don't know about the, the, the one thing that really stuck out was Rage quit during an Ipsic match for a fumbled May change. He must be from the East Coast. He must know you. I don't remember Rage quitting an Ipsic match, though. Well, you've also Rage quit a Maple Seed. I did two. Rage quit a Maple Seed 100%. <laughs> Oh, rage this quit is when so maple seed, okay. This is so funny. goddamn. He's my, on. He's my new favorite per- person, though. I mean, yes. I am gonna cut him, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still, he's so right. In so many things, yeah, right. Probably your wife. Yeah. Okay, uh, now in my defense, all right, <laughs> okay, yeah, no, the 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 having a uh, 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 I'm still salty about the uh, the the minivan. The, the match for members only. Um, the minivan, <laughs> the blazer was purchased because I have a tuition payment now. Oh, I didn't get rid of the truck because that I, is the such second, a liberal thing to say. Go. Mm-hmm. I have a tuition payment is a liberal thing to say. <laughs> yes. I, know, I sold. <laughs> Why aren't you sold, working through your uh, university? Uh, uh. Pull yourself yeah. up by your bootstraps. Bootstraps, yeah. <laughs> Listen, bitches. The second that goddamn <laughs> degree is paid off, I am getting a truck again. Look. Oh, dude. Even shit. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And I used to drive a motorcycle, so suck it. Oh, pretty good. Real pretty motorcycle? Good or used like to. Now it's more like extreme I've had, frisbee. I've had, all, I've had dirt bikes, four wheelers, three wheelers, and street bikes. Okay. So he's only been listening for 100 episodes, and he knows you like... He knows too much. Yeah. Way too much. <laughs> It's fantastic. Okay, who's been feeding him information? <laughs> Spies, bitches. <laughs> All right, somebody take Fraser's. Dave, you take Fraser's. Howdy, folks. Just wanted to say that I'm thankful for all the work you guys do, bringing us such fantastic quality content. It's always the highlight of my week when I'm able to listen to you guys while at work, on the road, or live. Your podcast has been great at keeping me informed of what's new in the industry and on the many events you guys organized. Honestly, I have no idea where you find the time. (coughs) Kelly. Anyway, I'm not much for long-winded emails, so keep it coming with the good stuff. P, I've been missing Trevor's... I can never say this word. Curmudgeonly. Oh, curmudgeonly. Curmudgeonly demeanor. I hope he's doing well with his studies and he'll come back soon. He's here from the center of the universe, bracket Toronto, Fraser. Hey, Fraser. That's awesome. All right. And then we've got some shout outs from some of the different platforms we're on. uh, Some of these are from uh, Instagram to start. Um, What, Kay? Instagram. 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 Uh, this is from Canada First Ammo. Says, oh. congrats on 400 guys. Sweet. Charlie the Maine Coon. I love Maine Coons. They're the mm. best cats ever. Uh, wow. I remember episode 117 where all you did was talk Halo. <laughs> congrats. <laughs> Bullseye North Superstore commented, that's a great accomplishment. The MKRA. Congratulations. You are all amazing. Thank you so much. As I listened, uh, as a listener since the first Canadian Reload episode, I also have two of the CCR t shirts. To the entire Slamfire catalog and counting, you have all done a service, a great, irreplaceable service to all the law abiding, gun toting, game hunting, lead coated, powder, gunpowder smelling. Gunny girl or gunny boy, loving trigger pulling, hunting gear, sporting, McClatchy shot, maple seed, Canucks, 
Who are your loyal listeners? Thank you. Uh, that was actually a good one. That was an awesome one. Yeah. And then these, there's nothing there, nothing there. Okay. Quite an impressive accomplishment. Congratulations. The Comfrey episode is the best one. <laughs> uh, that's, from, that's, that's from the New Brunswicker. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Kelly, you want to take the uh, Facebook review? Oh, do we want to talk about some of the ones that have been happening in Facebook before we go to the Facebook review? Oh, um, yeah. I haven't, yes, please. Okay. You got it open there. By all means, go right ahead. Thank you. Well, yeah. As soon as I actually get to them, because they people have been talking too much. Stop talking. <laughs> and a new email just dropped. <laughs> oh, did it? Why don't mm -hmm. you read the new email and all right. pull up these ones? Hey, Slamfire Radio. After listening to the majority of your 400 previous episodes. Oh, my goodness. Really? I'm sorry. The therapy <laughs> bills must be just astronomical. Uh, the majority of your 400 previous episodes, the general theme that stood out the most to me was when you guys discussed best of or top five list of various classes of firearms. I found these episodes to be very helpful for new shooters like myself when it came to making new purchases, whether it was a for a new shotgun, 22 mm -hmm. plinker, bolt action rifle, or black rifle. I feel like you guys should revisit some of these top five lists, considering the post OIC market that we have today. Some examples, top five firearms purchased for a new shooter. Number two, top five sporting rifles, 223, 76, two by 39, top five shotguns, pumps, semis, etc. top five PCCs, Top five hunting rifles, precision rifles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Keep up the great work. I look forward to future episodes. Brandon. Awesome. That's nice. Cool. Yeah. That's a great idea to revisit yeah. that, especially after the OAC. Okay. From Derek Butts, he says, thanks for sticking with it until at least 400. I listened for years doing three-hour commutes upgrade to gel ear cups in the Peltors. And Trevor got me back into RC with his YouTube review recently. You folks are fantastic ambassadors, and I always look forward to Thursdays now. Thanks, but he says. Uh, we also have, i uh, scrolling down just a bit from Jason. I missed that. Who was that? Uh, Derek Butts. Oh, Derek Butts. Cool. Yeah. So from Jason Phelps, he says, hi, guys, you were the reason I volunteered to help out with the Drumheller charity shoot. I just wanted to beat Trevor. Congrats. And thanks for being part of the family. Thanks, Jason. Uh, we also have Shawnee H. Happy 400. I was fortunate to find your show a few years ago, and I've been happy to be a Patreon ever since. So thank you. James Burke, who we also lovingly call Ginger Snaps. He says, congratulations. Keep up the good work. He wants to know where Brian is, too. But And that's about And everybody else is just chatting with each other. So it's great to see that. So... You guys, thanks for all the great messages and and uh, yeah, all the love as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, what's that? Yeah. Do it for you cool. people. <laughs> yeah. So, do you want to go into the Facebook review? Do you want me to read that too? You asked me to. Yeah, you take that one. I'm just looking at some other podcast related stuff here. Same okay, so we did get a. Add. We did get a good Facebook review, and it's from Ethan. He said, informative gun podcast that has taught me a lot on Canadian gun laws. So I can throw that in the face of gun law supporters. Uh, this pod, yeah, this podcast influenced me to get certified in C uh, CPR, first aid, and AED training uh, last year because of the episodes covering the topic. That's fantastic. As well as buy my Toyota Tacoma. Uh, it's a four cylinder, but Trevor set me on the path into researching this. Thanks a bunch. Uh, stay based, Adriel. All right. That's what he said. Stay, stay based, based, Adriel. Stay based. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, perfect. Okay. So if you would like to email the show for episode 401, a lot of you thought I was going to say and you can do so by sending it to slamfire radio at gmail.com. Um, all right, Patreonies, no new Patreonies this week, but if you'd like to support the show and become a Patreon, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com forward slash slamfire radio. Shout outs, um, Adriel, you got a bunch of names there. That was from last week, or did you? That's from last week. Yeah. All right, you got anything for this week? Nothing comes to mind. 
Thanks okay. to Bullseye for mailing me out this stuff so quick because I'm yep. going to get the first Maverick video out there. Even Sweet. if I don't shoot it, I'm putting it up there. I need to win. Yep. You hit first out. Everything's content. Mm-hmm. Highest. Thank highest you, ratings. Dave. Maybe I'll try to get it out Yeah. yeah. Mm. Kelly. I have a couple. So first of all, I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Ron Moore, who is Kelly's dad. He's now my new dad because he makes me brisket and I love it. So... <laughs> Yay. Uh, I also wanted to say thank you to all the listeners that wrote in and provided us with some sound bites. It sounds like you guys love us. I don't know why, but (laughs) it's, um, it's really, it's really nice to know that people are listening and you're here, Kelly. No, I actually don't think that's true, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you. And thanks for listening for 400 episodes. You're the reason why we do this. Hell yeah. Dave. Shout out to everybody who listens to the show, everybody who supports us, and to my fellow hosts. Over the years, you people rock, and I really enjoy hanging out with you Thursday evenings when I can and in person when we can. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I miss you guys. Cool. Soon. All right. Um, oh, this is going to be rough. Okay. My shout out is uh, me announcing that I'm leaving the show. This uh, will be my final episode. Uh, I can't thank you all enough. Um, it's been an amazing ride. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is me not rage quitting. This is me thanking everyone for the amazing time I've had as a podcaster. Um, the amazing friendships are going to last uh, forever. There's, I have no no doubt about that but um yeah i uh it's time for me to move on to other things and so i'm gonna i'm gonna call this chapter of my life to a close um and just say thanks man it's it's been a blast and you guys have uh have kept this ship afloat and slam fire would not be where it is today without adriel doing everything you do behind the scenes kelly doing everything you do behind the scenes in a different way dave filling in and bringing amazing content to the show and an outstanding contribution and uh yeah so i mean uh that's it i uh i'm not just gonna not show up I'm going to come on and uh, thank everybody. Thank you guys. Thank the listeners. I figured uh, the, the, the time to do it was now we'll go out on an epic fashion. Christina was like, drop the mic, drop the mic, and then just turn <laughs> off your camera. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, thanks everybody. I'm out. It's been a slice. Was not expecting that. Wow. Holy crap, Trevor. Well, thanks for all you've done. You've contributed so much to Canadian Firearms Podcast. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. Nonsense. Mm-hmm. No. So, but anyway, until next week, everybody, be sure to check us out on Gunners of Canada. Like us on Facebook. We're at 2,753. Uh, you can leave us a review on Facebook now. That's a thing. That's cool. Um, be sure to join the CCFR and uh, three of the four people here. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. Good night, Trevor. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.